time is always so hard. Cheers. Cheers. Start at six. And usually my my day starts at four thirty, so that's why I'm out here. And uh, I usually put my clothes on, on the uh, on the living room uh, sofa. And I get nice in the dark and uh, head out. Stay over, we can hang out in the backyard, we can put a fire. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. My name is Police Officer Wando Villalona. I am 47 years old and I am assigned to Citywide Traffic Task Force, New York City Police Department. My name is Jessica Tabon, and I am 45 years old, and I am a sergeant for the New York City Police Department, working in the Bronx Evidence Collection Unit. What made me choose this job? I believe what made me choose it was the fact that I was going to have you. You know, I mean, I had taken exams, and this was the first one that called me, which was actually uh, the transit police one. Your mom was uh, pregnant at the time, and, uh, you know, we needed something to be more stable. So I took the job for you to make sure that you were, uh, you know, you were good. I figured I wanted to become a police officer about the age of 18 or 19 because my mother, your grandmother, she was a police administrative age. I think I, out of everything, I felt most proud, especially when I was called officer for the first time. It was a very humbling, proud, and I felt very honored to be called officer. So I was very excited to start my journey as a police officer. It was a welcome change for me, because it was a, a challenge that I knew that I could, you know, I, could, I wanted to take on. If I could have been anything else, mechanical engineer. I did go to college to become a teacher. Um, I was very interested in working with kids as well and um, being in a, in, a, in a position where I could be of influence um, and of help to them. Once I realized, I was like, ah, oh, so much math. You know, I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't into it, I needed a break. When I was going to go into my third year in Hunter, then I came into the police department, so that was put on the, on the back burner. But I would have seen myself as a teacher 
the best thing about this job is the um, the brotherhood, I guess. It's a, you know, it's one of the things I uh, I, uh, I admire the most. It's like a family. I'm used, to, you know, I'm an only child, you know. So the instance I got on this job in the beginning, you know, it was such a dangerous place to work. You know, there was so many, so much crime that we had no choice but to stick together. So it was like, you know, inheriting a large family, you know? No denominations were involved, no color, just the blue, you know? Everyone kinda, oh man, thank God you came to work today. You know, I could duel up with you because the radios didn't work, you know? And that's how you respect it and, and you came to appreciate. The best thing about this job is that you have a front row seat to the greatest show on earth. And that's, that's society and the world and everything that's taking place. You are a first responder. So when things go on, there's no getting laid off, there's no getting days off, there's no getting going out. You are gonna be expected to come to work and you will be part of whatever it is that's going on. Uh, one of the offenses that are most personal to me is uh, domestic violence. As a child, witnessing my uh, my aunt being abused by her husband, it was something that uh, I never wish anyone would go through. You know, and uh, as a father, and as a father of four daughters, I hope that none of you, none of my children, go through that. I came from an era where it was the the, the broken windows policy, where. It was believed if you, um, if you go after the smaller uh, violations, that could very well lead to the bigger, the bigger things that are going on. So you may stop someone, let's say, for um, urinating in public or um, drinking an alcoholic beverage in public, and from there, that person may have a gun on them or that person may be wanted for a serious crime. I know now we're, not, we're kind of trying to veer away as a department from the uh, citations for uh, drinking alcoholic beverages in, in public and urination, even if it was just because of their quality of life problem. I feel with society and people in society that are hardworking and going about their, their business, they don't want to see people drinking in the streets and they don't want to see people urinating in the streets. Why would I change? Wow. Um, I could change September 11th, not having to physically witness what I witnessed. And um, do you want to talk about that? Um, during 9-11, I, I had only three and a half years on the job. I was um, pretty much a rookie. And um, I was very happy that day because my uh, death sergeant, death lieutenant at the time, he chose to keep me inside at, on, the, on the TS, which is basically the person that answers the phones. They was beautiful, otherwise perfect. And little did I know that it actually would, would end up almost changing my life. One of the other units from here put it over the radio that a plane had crashed into one of the towers. All of a sudden, we start, the phones start ringing off the hook. And when I pick up uh, the phone, people are actually calling the police department to tell us that a plane just went into the, truck, the, the World Trade Center. I remember driving up to the West Side Highway and uh, making a turn on, on 34th Street and 12th Avenue and seeing uh, that, that large hole on the, on the tower. And I was like, uh, man, that's not a regular plane. That's gotta be a commercial. And I'm like, wow, we're gonna be here a while. When the second plane hit, we went, in, in essence, you could hear the radios going crazy. We went from a level one to a level four mobilization, which means everybody has to go down. They needed eight cops, one sergeant and one lieutenant. So he's picking you, 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 and finally he's looking for that eighth person and I'm there, and literally our eyes like locked. And he's like, all right, I'm like, okay, I got it, I'm, I'm going. It was an accident until we saw the second plane coming across the, the harbor. And uh, I remember that loud screeching noise. They all, uh, it's almost like the plane took extra, like extra juice to get into the other tower. And uh, that's what we knew that we were in for it.
five minutes later, my lieutenant, he changed our, the, the captain had changed our, um, our assignments. And to be quite honest, I feel like he saved our life because that tower was the first tower to fall. We would have been inside that tower. And then when the tower fell, all you saw was that big smoke and debris coming towards you. And basically everybody was just running for their lives. We couldn't, you couldn't see anything. You couldn't uh, breathe. It was almost like you could feel those particles going into your skin. We were covered, we were completely white. Uh, I didn't have a problem chasing a murderer or rapist or, or you know, or a fair beater or doing traffic stops. But I said, man, this is, this is crazy. This is terrorism. So we're not, how are we gonna fight this? You know, we knew that the job was gonna take a, it was gonna evolve into like that terrorism aspect of it. And I wasn't sure we were prepared for it. Our van, all the, the, the windows were completely shattered. We couldn't find our lieutenant or sergeant. We were just kind of floating around and finding, you know, what to do helping people for about four hours. And then eventually um, we found each other and um, we ended up going to, to another area to help. But we were out there for about 23 hours before we ended up coming back. But I thought about you guys. The first thing I remember, the first phone before the towers came down, I went to a public phone. We didn't even have cell phones. I didn't have a cell phone. I remember calling your grandmother and says, go get the girls out of school. And I thought about you two. You know, so make sure you guys are safe. You know, anything else that happens, as long as I know my daughter's with somebody I, you know, I can count on and trust. Because I didn't know where your mother was at. She was probably down there somewhere, but we had no communication as to where we, we were both stationed. Did you ever think to call each other? No. Unfortunately, I did not. That first day was the, was the biggest day for me. I saw a lot of death that day. You know, you think about it all the time. I haven't been able to go to the memorial, you know, because I think that that's gonna be a very emotional time for me. And it just makes you realize, you know, how quickly life can change. I had three and a half years. If had I died that day, it would have been a completely different life for you. You would have grown up without a mother. And if you would have had just a memory and, 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 and uh, you know, stories of who I was. If you could go back and stop yourself from accepting a position as a police officer at all, would you? No, I wouldn't. As I said, I'm very happy with the career that I chose. No, I wouldn't change anything I've done. I would not change my position as a police officer. I have actually, um, as I've gotten older, I've appreciated more being a police officer than I did in my younger years. Exciting. I've never felt um, I've never felt like I was less than because I'm a woman. I've never felt as I was as if I was less than because I'm a minority, a Latina. Um, I feel this job offers you many different opportunities. You have um, you have to work for them. If you work hard, you can achieve basically whatever it is that you want. I believe I made differences in people's lives, and I always set out. When I did my tour, if I could just change one person's mind a day, I think I'm doing okay. After this chapter of your life has closed, where do you see yourself going forward in five years, ten years? Traveling as much as I can. I love to travel. So I have to hit another continent now. So hopefully see myself uh, doing my passion, which is uh, you know, massage therapy you know, doing a lot of traveling, and enjoying my children. Finally, being able to enjoy my children, spending more quality time with them. I just look forward to living passionately, to spending as much time as I can with my loved ones without having restrictions, without having to put in for a day off, picking up and going on vacation without having to see if it's my vacation pick. I'm a runner and I'm part of the NYPD Running Club. I plan to still be part of the NYPD Running Club and in fact, I plan to have a bigger part in the NYPD Running Club. Maybe do uh, charity type events and give back to the community. I think that would be a good thing. Um, so I look forward to being a bigger part of that as well. I met a, a lot of great people and, and it's just a, a, a positive positive club to be a part of. And it keeps me in shape. We, we, we run, we, we, we travel. I just think that's a big, deal in my life and I look forward to, to, to being a bigger part of it. So that's it. I just plan to live my life passionately and live my best life.